Hello, good day and welcome back to Go Lang on the Run. My name is Varel Adams and in this video, I'll be showing you how to encode comma separated value in Go. Now here I have logs that built by the standard library logs package. I like log Rust personally. Want to use that instead? So here we go. Run this, and notice here on the screen how that's been written out. Let's get rid of this guy. Save this. Run this again, and as you can see, um, it's encoding my data um, just as we said it would here. Um, if you look, you can see that it's quoted my comma separate value file. But anyway, it uses some it used double quote because it wanted to get this is my my data had double quotes in it. So it has to put the double quotes, like I said, to represent an actual quote. Um, if my data did not have double quotes, and then I rerun. Now you see the difference. It's exactly as we had here. Okay. We can easily change this from writing to standard out to just writing a file. So we can say, no, instead of standard out, I'm going to do F and then I'm going to defer closing the file. Um, even the simple application, I don't want to think about it. All right. So there we go. And so now if we open this up, um, we should be writing a new file here. Well, why don't we use the same name? Let's call it user db. That's CSV. User user database. That's CSV. Save it. And I'm going to run. And let's see. Okay. So no such file or directory. Da -da -da, data. Okay. So which directory am I in? Oh, so I might be running this. Okay, so let's do this. Create a terminal. So I'm running this from the go run directory. So that's why going up one and then to a data directory doesn't work. But if I go to comma separated value, um, CD, so I'm a separated value, encode it, and then I do go run. Now it runs successfully. And as you can see, here is my file. And so it created my file here for me. Now, we can certainly take the rest of these and encode it, but this doesn't write a heading into my file. If you look at my comma separate value file, there's no heading. That's because the CSV writer does not deal with writing a header. No matter what you do, you can't get it to write any data because all you're given it, all the methods are about writing slices. So even when we, let's take this, and copy the rest of these Bam. and I go here and I'm going to paste this so save this and now we have even more records all right so I can press continue right in you know duplicating this line I just write the rest of the record this way. Um, notice I have a header and the header is just another slice of string. So if I wanted to write that, I'll have to write that too this way. And let's do this, that, and then I'll have to say um, header. I want to write the header first because Conversate Revival doesn't care about that. And user one and user two. So that's one way of writing it and now I'll get back the same file I essentially created. So there we go. I have my header and um, as you can see, this is exactly the same as essentially this. Uh, there might be some extra. Oh, oh, there you go. My data here has this and notice no difference whatsoever between I, sw I switch between these two. No difference whatsoever. Okay, um, except one has an extra new line, but 
no difference. All right, so we're generating the same data. Now, like I said, there's another way of doing this, which is we can create a slice of slices. And instead of writing and having to flush each one, we want to be able to say, write all. And then we just give it this slice of slice, which is all our data. And all we have to do once we write everything, write all calls flush for us. That's why we don't have to call flush. Now we have the same thing, but fewer lines. And so we rerun and no error. And the result is exactly the same as before when we use individual rights. Now, whether or not this sort of makes it sort of clearer to compose your data this way, individually this, and then combine it here into a set of records and then just have write all, write it all out. Whether you wanna do that or it as you generate data, or you loop through some list of data, then you write it out. It all depends on you. Now, what if there's an elephant in the room, right? Before we were using this types, we already had a user type defined. And it seems a waste that we cannot reuse this to create our users. Well, what about if we, let's just go back and take a peek at some of the records that we had. Um, here, uh, do we have some data? Oh, we just read it in. Um, so let's do that. Let's read in our data. So we're gonna read JSON data. We could read XML too, but let's read JSON data. And so we're gonna put it in our encoding decoding. And so let's read JSON data and we're gonna call read json data and we're going to say i want you to go to data that uh, user at database that json and so read that save it in uh, some database so users let's call it comma error colon equals i think this returns okay those two parameters and now i'm not going to worry about this right now. I'm going to delete this and I am going to check and see if nil not equals to error, then not that fatal and error. Okay, that's fine. So now we have some data. Okay, we still need our error because, oh, you know, we can derive that um, from our from the fields, from the structure, sorry. So we're gonna open something to write to. Now we need our data set to be populated with some, uh, we, have, we need some data to write. So one way to write is to write the header. Of course, since we write in stuff, we have to do flush. So we're gonna do flush by ourselves. We're gonna check for error, but now we have this user data and user data is just a slice of users. So it'd be nice if we could sort of sit here and do four. We don't care about each record, but each record, you know, or each user, for example, will on equals range over database. Okay. User, sorry. And Oh, it's a type user that database. So let's see, what is our type user that database? Types that go user database. Oh, and uh, oh, we have users. Okay, so that's fine. So we can do users that, okay, so let's call it database that users. And we're gonna rename this to database because that's some other fields there called type and so on. Save this. Um, what is it complaining about here? Function unexpected read JSON expecting. Uh, da, da, da. What is it expecting? Oh, where did I close my file? So it's not happy with the function I copied and paste. Um, types that JSON. 
oh that's because um it's not pulling in my it's not pulling in this guy so let's get the types let's stick it in there save let's see import we also need encoding that xml so xml oh, json no actually no we don't need json because our file here doesn't oh json decoder yes it does okay json yeah encoding the json let's see save this now what am i complain oh so complain about unexpected that are expecting open parentheses fungus so function read json string database yeah why is it complaining about that uh, let me revisit why that's complaining about that not sure uh, main what did i leave out okay so range over that let's see okay let me fix this first to make sure that i ain't chasing my tail oh there we go yep i should fix that <laughs> Um, no one they couldn't import things because I had error in my code. Um, but all right, so now I can say, what if I can say this? What if I can do um, record or CVS record, come separate value record, colon equal user. So I have a user and I could say user encode to or get a slice, right? Strings, something like that. So basically, what I really want to do is have a method on my user type that I can say, hey, I want you to represent yourself as a slice of strings, right? So encode yourself or in some way as a slice of strings. And then if I can get that, then I can do w.write and then I can pass this comma separated value. Um, not really a record because it's not a comma, separate, comma separated value record. Right? No, it would just be a slice, right? So this would be a slice of string. So slice of string. So pass that as a slice of string. So encode, your, encode, encode <laughs> yourself is a slice of string. Encode as strings, right? So let me copy this and I'm going to go here to types and I am going to ask this object to encode itself as a type of string. So a slice of string. So I'm going to say func, paste that, and encode yourself as a type of string. And I need you to take receive a user, All right? So user, so user, and your receiver. And here we go. And what you're going to return is you're going to return a slice of string so slice of strings which is all the fields of this object should be returned as a slice of string so let's say return to give me back a slice of string and how is that done well i don't necessarily need a pointer because this is just reading so i don't need to modify it so that's why i'm gonna do a receiver on just a copy of the object instead of a pointer and so we already have this guy. We have ID, da 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 da, and the order in which I'm gonna do it is just in the order it's here. Okay, first name, last name, username, password, email. So I'll have to change a few things, but that's okay. Um, at least all my records are gonna follow the same thing since they use the same function. So uh, let's open this up a little bit. And so I can see that. And so SS is equals to append, right? Oh, well, actually, there might actually be a, instead. So one way of doing it is to say SS equal append onto this slice, you know, SS, the ID, right? But ID, I need ID to be an ASCII. So I have to do string convert um, and then ASCII, integer to ASCII. So I need this and then an integer, which is ID is. So this is user.id. So notice how painful this is. And then for SS equals append SS. And then I can use the other ones. Where 
once we come into this function, SS is actually nil. So we actually need to make a valid slice that we can work with. So SS is equals to make a slice of strings. And no, we don't, we're going to ignore capacity. Now we actually know, you know, we can, instead of growing the string like this, we know how many fields we have. So we have six fields. So we can actually make a slice with six fields already. And that way we really don't have to do this. What we can do instead is all right. So slightly better than what we had before. Of course, we don't need this. Instead of having to call a pen method, which is going to keep growing our slice, we know how big our slice is. So we might as well create a slice big enough to hold our thing. And because of the issue of when I created the data or I tried to encode it here, um, my header was have the fields in different order than my data set. It's best to, instead of creating the header here, it's best to have in your type, you create the header. So I can have a variable that represent my fields here that's going to be exported that I call, you know, I can call it a con. I can, it can be a cons because it can be a slice, but I can have header as a function. So I don't want anybody to modify it. So I don't want to actually export a variable, but I can have a function that return my header. So I can have a function called func get header or something like that or header get header and it returns a slice of string right and here it returns this guy and this could be a hidden um, slice that it returns so actually let's make it that way so hidden variable so var paste this and of course since I'm declare var outside of here I can use a shortcut and so now I can actually have my header string here, slice, matches up correctly with this. So this is ID, first name, last name, whatever I want to use, username, password, email. So let's switch that. Like that. And so now it matches up with my type. So after I come in and change my type, I'll have to update my header and of course update this encoder as strings method. Uh, that's the best name I could come up with. And then return header. Okay. All right. So now back in my code here, I can do instead of writing, when I write a header here, my error would come from types that get header. And so everything is now much more maintainable. And so save and where am I getting error now? Okay. So arranges over, uh, where are colon SS now? Um, this coming in. I uh, don't know, remember why that's coming in. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, there we go. So yes, I was saving this. All right. So now I can range over. What is this complaining? Users, capital U. All right. So now I can range over a list of object I read from my JSON. Um, where's my JSON file? Oh, there we go. And now I can encode it. So here's an example. We'll put again in our password, we'll put a comma and we'll put create another user. All right, so we want one of them to have a password. Okay, so this password had comma, so we expect that to be encoded. We want those, one of these to have a password with a quote. So we're going to make this a nested field. And in source of nested, we're going to use this type of string. And notice how it's complaining. That's because this is a JSON document. It doesn't understand uh, Go's format of strings. So we cannot actually use that. So the way to quote this is to change me or change um, backslash quote my backslash that password. And now we've encoded 
the quote around my and so let's see so this is the actual fields value and json is just that everything is a string that is not a number like this guy or a boolean so that's how we escape it and put quotes around my so let's read this in as json and then write it back out as comma separate value and see what we get so we go back to our command line here and we run our program and with no errors and let's look and see comma separate value we should see exactly what we said well here's our header because we got that from our types the header and the values that we read in and mary jane and sure enough this is encoded and so here too is the one with the comma so it works just fine so that's a roundabout way of showing you how to encode data in xml and that is exactly this is exactly how i did it for the application i was working on except with a little caveat that i'm gonna tell you about when i do decoding all right so thanks see you in the next video and i'll show you how to decode json all right take care bye